sectioning of formal and fixed and paraffin embedded tissue is widely recognised as the standard for most diagnostic applications, and for good reason. Sections cut from paraffin, they have good morphology, and you've also got the ability, if necessary, to go back and cut further sections for any follow-up investigations. Nevertheless, this procedure does come at a cost, that in terms of the time required to initially fix the tissue, process it into paraffin, cut the sections, dry the sections, and then subsequently stain them. So we're talking hours from the time that the biopsy was originally obtained through to the time that a diagnosis can be made. Fortunately, as you can see on the right-hand side of this table, there is an alternative to use of conventional microtomy, known as cryotomy, whereby the tissue is actually, rather than being fixed and processed into paraffin, it's simply rapidly frozen in liquid nitrogen, for example, and then sections can be cut through that frozen piece of tissue um, in, a, in a fraction of the time that's normally required to prepare a paraffin section. The other advantage of performing histology on fresh frozen tissue is that it avoids the use of fixatives which can interfere with immunohistochemistry and also tends to prevent studies of enzyme histochemistry. Nevertheless, frozen sections generally display a poorer morphology than can be achieved using well-fixed and processed tissue. So for that reason, if ever there is the opportunity to do so, such as in the case of an intraoperative diagnosis, it's always best practice to try and retain a piece of tissue if possible for routine fixation and processing. So having covered the theory behind the use of cryotomy, let's look at a practical example of how frozen sections are cut using a cryostat, such as this model here at QUT. So here our senior technician, Chris Casia, is demonstrating the inside of the cryostat. There are a couple of specimens over on the left-hand side there, one of which is already prepared in our plastic embedding medium and then a fresh piece of tissue there as well. So the first approach that can be used is to use our plastic embedding medium, such as this one here, OCT compound, as a way of adhering the fresh frozen tissue to a stub or disc such as this one, and then we'll place a bit more of the OCT on top in order to secure it in place. Alternatively, you can actually use a mold um, such as the one that can be seen on the right hand side here, use that to completely surround and freeze your piece of tissue and then you can transfer that once again to, to the stub. So once that's completely frozen, such as this one here prepared a bit earlier, we can then transfer that to the specimen head or chuck And then once secured in place, the process from here is remarkably similar to performing regular microtomy on paraffin sections. So here the blades that we're using are identical to the ones that we use for our paraffin microtomes. So once the blade has been inserted and clamped in place, we simply move that to an area where it's convenient to keep a track of how much of the blade that we've used. And then the position of the tissue is, is altered using this motorized feed switch up above, as well as the hand wheel on the right hand side. So again, quite similar to how you would normally position a, a block of tissue on a regular microtome. Having positioned the tissue close enough to the blade, you then face the block in a fairly similar fashion to working with paraffin blocks. 
and you can see there's quite a lot of excess plastic mounting medium coming off the surface so it can sometimes be useful to trim any excess mounting media from around the edges just to make it a little bit easier to shape those sections to the desired size and shape. Having done that we can then mount the stub back onto the chuck and then complete the facing until we're happy that the entire face of the block of tissue is showing through. So you notice at the moment that the tissue coming off the face of the block is quite crumpled, but that's okay whilst we're just cutting down through the layers to get a complete face. Okay, so that's now looking pretty close to what we need. Having done that, we then insert what's known as an anti-roll plate and adjust the section thickness down to the desired level in the order of 3 to 5 microns. The benefit of that anti-roll plate now becomes more apparent as we continue to turn the hand wheel. You'll see that now the sections, rather than crumpling and rolling, are now coming off the face and onto that plate there in a way that now makes it a lot easier to visualise those sections. So Chris now will just continue to cut a few more until there's a nice ribbon. We then remove the anti-roll plate and using a couple of paint brushes here just very carefully dissecting those sections within the ribbon such that we've got two to three pieces there each. And then just grab a, a microscope slide and using this rolling like action you'll see the sections adhering onto the glass. Now it's worth pointing out at this stage that owing to the differences in water content between various tissues when fresh, this will affect the overall hardness of the tissue when frozen. And so therefore it is often necessary to make slight adjustments to your cutting temperature. So in the case of something like adrenal gland of cartilage, um, you can see that has a relatively higher water content and so you'll use a relatively warmer cutting temperature as compared to something like breast or fatty skin which having a relatively lower water content will therefore require a much cooler cutting temperature. So now returning to our freshly cut sections, it's important that we proceed to fix them, such as in a, a brief treatment with methanol, followed by our desired staining protocol, which in this case is a, a rapid H&E staining procedure. So having done that, what can we expect to see? Well, here's an example of a fresh frozen section of kidney uh, in which that rapid H&E staining protocol has been applied. And as you can see, whilst the morphology is perhaps not as good as what you would obtain with a conventional formalin-fixed paraffin-embedded section, you can certainly make out quite a few details.